what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be talking about seven mistakes that new players make in rise of kingdoms now really quick i just want to give a huge shout out to all of my newest subscribers the people that are following me over on twitch even when i'm not live the people that are joining my discord i really appreciate you guys thank you so much the support has been amazing and i really do appreciate it now this list is in no particular order so these seven things are all things of equal importance that you should avoid doing um when you are a new player in rise of kingdoms i'm gonna try to make this video as short as possible but these are relatively complex things so hopefully you guys are okay with that i'll try to put timestamps in the description below so you can jump around to each one that you want to hear about now the first mistake that new players make is that they don't teleport to where their alliance is especially where their alliance resource plot is so if you guys didn't know um if you zoom out on the map and you join a brand new kingdom with a brand new account you're going to be teleported into this outer ring of the territory and you're gonna see when you join an alliance which i highly recommend you do uh, you're gonna see your alliance members show up as blue dots on the mini map and typically wherever there's a clump of those blue you're gonna see all the cities in that area and what you want to do as a new player is teleport near your alliance for a variety of reasons um one it's so that way you can support each other's rallies it's so that way you decrease the odds of you getting attacked yourself you also gain benefits by being on alliance territory and if you're where everybody else is that means the odds of your alliance building the resource plot in that area are going to be higher and these resource plots are the best place to farm when you are offline because they just they're so many resources inside these plots they're really really great always 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 gather from these um so always teleport near your alliance and that's going to help you in a variety of ways but the way that you want to teleport near your alliance is important right if you look here you'll take it you'll see that the yellow is where my alliance is and you'll see that all of our cities are on the border of the territory and you you might think you know why what does it matter if you're inside the alliance uh, or on the on the border and it's actually crucial that you be on the border for a variety of reasons the first one is actually because when you're when you are on the map nothing can spawn underneath your city right so barbarians can't spawn on top of your city fortresses uh barbarian forts can't spawn on top of your city resource nodes can't spawn on top of your city so that's important so what you want to do is of course you want to be on alliance territory because you get a ton of buffs but you don't want to take up that much space inside the territory because you want as many resource nodes as possible to spawn inside of your alliance territory because anytime that you farm the resources within that alliance territory your alliance will gain some bonus resources for you doing so and that doesn't take anything away from you it's just a straight up bonus for your alliance and your alliance when it's growing really needs those resources to build flags do alliance research tech things like that so always make sure when you're teleporting towards your alliance that you're on the edge of the territory again you still want to be inside the territory so you get the buffs but you want to take up as least amount of space as possible so for example this player right here probably should be a little bit more to the left you know and th there's micro optimizations it doesn't you know as long as you try your best to be as uh, as on the border as possible so that way more stuff can spawn in the middle the better that it is for your alliance and that's the correct way to do it now that smoothly brings it into my second mistake that new players do and that is not gathering inside their alliance territory or at all when they log off right so like i said if your alliance is new you're on a new kingdom new server they're really going to need those resources because there's a ton of technology that they have to research there's a ton of flags that you have to build in order to capture um holy sites and things like that i mean we can even take a look here this next technology research is going to take almost a million of everything except gold uh and so things get really expensive for your alliance and you're reaping the benefits of being in the alliance and so the faster that your alliance can improve the more that your own account can improve improve and that's super crucial so farming inside alliance territory is absolutely critical until you get to the point where your alliance has maxed out the technology they've built all the flags that they need in order to passively grow the amount of resources that you're getting over time um but up until that point you should always be farming inside alliance territory the only exception to that is if you really need stone for example because you're about to upgrade your wall and there's just no stone plots inside your alliance territory then you don't have any choice but to farm outside of your alliance territory right 
so those are the only exceptions if you desperately need a resource and it's not inside your land's territory then you have no choice but to farm outside of it but otherwise you should always be farming inside alliance territory if your alliance is still doing technology and building flags because it's just so hard to progress as an alliance if people aren't doing this and again if you're about to log off you should have all of your gatherers out gathering nodes on the map you should have at least one inside your alliance um your alliance uh, farming node here it might be a mother load for you or it might be farmland or something like that but this has the most resources which means you your gatherers will be gathering the longest um which is really really important so always send out your gatherers when you're logging off or when your ap is depleted send out gatherers because otherwise you're just kind of wasting time that you could be doing something productive with them on the topic of resources let's move on to mistake number three and that involves the resource token items that are in your item inventory i see players even experienced players using these when they get them and that drives me absolutely insane because these resource tokens have there's no downside to leaving them in item form and what this does is actually it prevents you from getting them robbed so basically if you look in the top right corner you'll see all the resources that i currently have on my player and this is not including any of these resource items that you see in my inventory resources in their raw form can be stolen from your city if your city is attacked or rallied resources in item form are completely perfectly safe inside of your item inventory your item inventory does not have a limit, right so it's not like you can cap out any of these things there's no expiration date there's no tax for using them at a certain time there is literally no downside to leaving items in their respective resource token form and in fact it is safer to do so and you should only ever be using these resource items in the event where you absolutely need them in for example if you have a really big hospital bill and you have to heal them up or if you're you're just a little bit short of a really massive upgrade for your wall or your city hall or something like that then you can go ahead and use these to fill in the gap so you can initiate that upgrade but you, for the most part you want to leave these as item forms all the time the fourth mistake that i see players make is super critical because this is one that you cannot undo right the first thing the first three things that we talked about are all behaviors that you can change moving forward this fourth one is crucial because you cannot undo this mistake right and that is something and i've talked about this in other videos but that is maxing out the first active skill of any commander right the first active skill is the most powerful skill of any commander with the exception of gathering commanders right so if you look at cleopatra or if you look at um somebody like constance or Gaius marius they have their gathering skill is not their first skill um and for them their most powerful skill is the gathering one because that's how you're going to be using them but for the, for the most part 90 percent of commanders in the game uh, if they're used for fighting other players their first skill is going to be their most powerful and the only way that you can guarantee that your next skill point gets put into that specific skill is if you leave them at level one and you can see that's exactly what i've done here with genghis khan and with saladin and with guan yu the reason that i leave them at level one is because i want to get their first skill to five before i go ahead and star them up right because again skills are added in in random order amongst the skills that are unlocked so if you just don't unlock any other other skills you will guaranteed put the skill points in their most powerful skill which is the best move right that's the best play um so I highly recommend doing that for any commander that you intend on using seriously, level them up in the appropriate manner. That way you guarantee that the first skill gets maxed out. This applies for epics as well. Again, any epic that you use against fighting other players, you're going to want to max out that first skill first. And I always see this mistake. People buy Minamoto and they start pumping skills into him and I, they get him up to level 32 because they used all their experience tombs. And then they realize, oh my God, I didn't max out his first skill. And that's the most powerful skill. And you can't undo this unless you just create a new character or a new account somewhere else and you can't transfer your progress so always make sure max out that first skill before you start them up now the fifth mistake that i see players make and this one is a little bit more subjective but i always see new players spending money on the game in areas where they're not going to get that much value so what do i mean by this well you see all these super value bundles here they're not all equal right they're not all equal and you could look at the percentages here and think oh well you know clearly the living legend bundle is better than the city of hope bundle because you get a it's a much steeper discount for the same price right but that's not the case this is 
super deceptive right it's super deceptive um mathematically it probably does work out that way but the items in here in terms of their usefulness are subjective based on the where your account is at at the moment in time and i can tell you there are very few players who should be buying living legend right it looks like it's the best there's there's some dazzling starlight sculptures there's a golden key it's very tempting for new players but this is one of the worst bundles that you can buy as a new player for sure guaranteed i promise you and so it's really frustrating seeing players buy bundles that you know it, they could have spent their money somewhere else and gotten more value out of it now you could be saying okay you know the, the where I spend my money is my own uh, business and you know it's subjective because you know whereas one of these bundles might be better than the other I really really want these sculptures or I really really want that golden key and that's fine right that's fine you can spend your money however you want but if if what you want to do is maximize the value and benefit you get out of the dollars that you're spending um, then it's crucial that you don't buy the wrong things the only things that you should be buying and this is this is for players who don't spend that much money in the game right if you're a super well and you buy everything then you know just buy whatever you want it doesn't matter um but if you don't spend that much money on the game there's only a couple of things that i could recommend that you buy the first thing is the 38 gem supply you can see i've bought this multiple times because i have them stacked together this bundle is ten dollars and you get nineteen thousand five hundred gems if you look in the gem store um, that's, you know, that's what $80 worth of gems or something like that for only 20 bucks. The downside is that you do have to claim this every single day manually. So you can't let it, you can't let it, um, you know, gather up. And then after 30 days, collect all of it, you have to log in every day to claim this. But if you are playing every single day, this is probably your best value. The second best thing is called the growth fund, which I no longer have because I bought it, but it basically gives you a chest of gems for each uh city hall milestone that you reach and if you reach all the way to level <clears throat> i think city hall 25 gives you all together i think you get like 90,000 gems or something like that right and so that's 15 dollars for 90,000 gems again you can see that that is insanely good value never you see the screen i'm on right now never spend money here just never just never do it there's just there i i cannot think of a, a reason right i've never made a first purchase um it just it there's just not a good reason to spend money here you would have to be a mega whale for this to be worth it to you so gem supply growth fund those are really great um there's seasonal bundles sometimes the seasonal bundles are super super valuable um anytime that there's like a holiday like um christmas halloween mother's day springtime there's always uh you know every couple of months there's hol uh, holiday bundles seasonal bundles those are usually pretty good value compared to what we have normally in the shop so those aren't that bad um king's coronation you can see i i purchased every single tier of this uh king's coronation is out of all of the default bundles it is definitely the best one so i would highly recommend if you're going to buy any of these and you're a new player king's coronation is the one that you should go for um beyond that maybe the daily bundles if you want like the chance at getting the legendary commander these are relatively cheap um you get a gold key a couple speed ups you know it is what it is these aren't that bad because they're pretty cheap um and beyond that right if none of those things apply to you that i just said and you're dead set on buying one of these bundles which one should you buy if you don't have city hall 25 you should buy city of hope this is your best bet because it will give you building speed ups and it'll give you the resources that you need to get your city to that level which means trading the gold that you would normally get um for the other um resources right like most of these other ones have gold which you do not really need until you're like a t5 player um so with that being said unless your city hall is 25 already you should be getting city of hope because the building speed ups are important um and even still when you when you level up like your troop training buildings to 25 when you get your academy um your to 25 you know those are things you're going to want building speed ups for for sure if you've maxed out all your buildings the next best thing that you should be buying is fountain of wisdom right this is for sure the next bottleneck you're going to face is that you're not going to have enough research speed ups to get to t5 so this is the next best one if you're if you're below like 50 million power or if you're below 40 million power and you're buying hammer and anvil or resource reserves or war machine or even uh you know th th there's really no reason for it right there's no reason for it because you know you may think oh i need training speed ups but if you're at 20 million power like your priority should be getting to, to to max city hall to getting the t5 right and so you're kind of wasting your money on on this when you should be trying to get stronger faster in my opinion 
so i hate to see it i hate to see players buy resource reserves when they're only at 10 million power it drives me absolutely nuts um you can get re uh, resources from the map uh so yeah that's what i would recommend i always see players buying bundles that i don't think are appropriate for their skill level um and to me it's kind of just a waste of money uh not really a waste but again they could be spending that money better in a different bundle keeping on the topic of gems another huge mistake and this is mistake number six a huge mistake that i see is that i see players spending their gems uh making big gem purchases when there's not a more than gems event so if you guys didn't know there's an event in this game called more than gems and essentially what this event does it comes around usually every two to three months right typically what this event does is it will give you items very very good items and uh rewards just for spending your gems on anything right you could buy whatever you want and you'll get these rewards you get legendary commander sculptures speed ups all sorts of incredible rewards during the more than gems event if you spend a certain amount of gems and so it's twenty-five thousand gems per day so you could spend a total of fifty thousand gems across the entirety of the event and you will get the maximum amount of rewards now why is this important well i will see people buying books of the covenant with their gems in bulk and it's not more than gems right so literally what you're doing when you're doing that is you are literally purposely not gaining the most value out of those gems and i get it right like you, you don't want to be patient and you don't want to wait for the more than gems event i get that but in the long run all you're doing is hurting your own growth i see this a lot with vip you know people say oh you know should i spend seventy thousand gems to to rush vip uh vip number you know eight or something like that or 11 or whatever it's like it drives me nuts because you can spend those gems today and get to the next vip level or you can wait a month spend the gems during a more than gems event and not only will you get that vip level but you'll get x amount of legendary commander sculptures on top of it which are super hard to come by they're very difficult to get so i always see players if i see them spending tens of thousands of gems and that event is not up and running i always cringe a little because really what that means is you might be slowing the progression of your account down and i hate to see that right the only exception to this is if you're like 10,000 gems away from vip 10 or something like that right because this is the first one where you get legendary commander sculptures or from vip 12 where this is the first one where you get two legendary commander sculptures like in that event like yeah maybe because each day that you go you would be losing out on a legendary commander sculpture but but besides that massive gem purchases should typically be done during more than gems event especially if you're free to play or a low paid uh, or a low spending player because otherwise you're just giving up rewards that are super super good and the seventh mistake and this is crucial so play, pay attention the seventh mistake that i always see new players making is attacking other player cities for no reason right you create an account you start training you get to t2 or maybe you get to t3 troops and you think okay now is my chance i'm going to start crushing these smaller accounts i'm going to start killing these these other players and the problem is that when you attack another player city you take massive losses in terms of your troops that die in terms of filling your hospital and the amount of resources that it will take to um, heal your troops and train new ones it's almost never worth it right unless you are in war and or unless there's the mightiest governor event or kingdom versus kingdom something like that never attack player cities just don't do it there's no point right and if you do it should be a rally from the strongest player in your alliance right that should be the only time that something gets that someone gets attacked it, unless you're double their power or something like that right if they're a 10 million power player and you're a 40 million power player and it's the mightiest governor and you know that that city hasn't logged in in 46 days then sure Go ahead and hit the city right but other than that there's really no reason to hit player cities um it's it's a terrible idea it will slow down the amount of troops that you're training and healing and progressing um and you're just going to be wasting resources that you should be saving for building upgrades or for uh, technology upgrades and things like that so you know if you're a 10 million power player and you're commenting on my videos hey who should i pair with scipio to attack a player city i'm just like oh my god no don't do that like unless you're the strongest player in your alliance and you're in war there's no reason for that um save your resources save your troops there will be better uses for them and i'm i promise you later down the line there will be a better use of those troops and you'll get plenty of kills during uh, other events throughout the game with that being said guys this video has been way longer than i hoped that it would be but i tried to make it as succinct as possible 
if you guys enjoyed this video i would really appreciate a thumbs up it really does help out my channel a ton subscribe to my channel with the bell turned on that way you know the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video you will get a little notification comment down below any mistakes that you see new players making and that way maybe in the future i can make a part two to this video uh, that will help new players even more so comment down below any mistakes that you're seeing the link to my twitch is in the description below i would highly recommend you guys follow me on there because if i'm alive even if i'm not playing rise of kingdoms you can come over and ask me questions about the game and i can respond to you in real time so you don't have to wait for me to respond and see your comments and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace